from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. We're delighted tonight to welcome two of Mrs. Coolidge's great-granddaughters to the library to help us celebrate this weekend. Imagine growing up calling her great-granny. Please join me in a round of applause for Peg and Josie Winship. They're down here. Do you want to stand up so they can see you? Bring up the lights. And I'd also like to welcome Representative Jackie Walorski from Indiana and her family who are here at tonight's concert. <clears throat> this weekend's programming is truly reflective of Mrs. Coolidge's musical instruments. We begin the evening with a blockbuster panel featuring women in the music world. NEA Chairman Jane Chu, Chamber Music America CEO Margaret Lioli and Astrid uh, Schween, the new cellist of the Juilliard String Quartet. Tonight, you will also hear Meredith Monk and her vocal ensemble perform The Soul's Messenger, an eclectic representation of Monk's career as a leading American composer and performer. Tomorrow, you can experience early music with a fantastic program performed by the Renaissance Choir uh, Pomerium. You're also invited to view, and I would really urge you, I've done this before, I, I've asked you to do this before, but please, um, during the time that is up, go to the Madison Building across the street to view our current special exhibition, Chamber Music, The Life and Legacy of Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge. It's located in front of the Performing Arts Reading Room on the first floor of the Madison Building. And um, I've asked the two curators, Robin Rausch and Caitlin Miller, if they would um, do a special uh, in tour of the uh, exhibit some Saturday in the, while it's still up. So if there is interest, and, and to do it for our, our concert goers. So if there is interest um, among you and you express it to my um, co concert staff, we will arrange to do that one, one Saturday for, for, for those of you who want to tour the, um, the exhibit with them. Um, this exhibit brings to life some of the pivotal moments in Mrs. Coolidge's life, such as the world premiere of Appalachian Spring, the commissioning of Bartok's fifth string quartet. The exhibit is open, you can go on your own from 8.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Monday through Saturday. You're also invited to attend a special pre-concert lecture tomorrow at 12.30 um, p.m. in the Whittle Pavilion featuring the Coolidge exhibit curators, as well as filmmaker Marjorie Short, who created a documentary about Mrs. Coolidge, which you may have seen running. Mrs. Coolidge established an unprecedented legacy of supporting music at the nation's library, which has grown to include any support from many foundations and individual donors. We rely on this support to continue to grow our concert series and commissioning program, and I invite you to consider becoming a member of our Friends of Music donor program. You can speak with any of my staff here tonight or visit our website, www.loc.gov slash concerts. Please also join us immediately following tonight's concert for a nightcap conversation on stage with Meredith Monk. Enjoy the show.
Thank you very much for coming tonight. Um, it's my great pleasure to sing in this beautiful hall. And the first um, four songs I like to sing are a cappella pieces, and I'll tell you a little bit about them after I sing them. The first one is called Porch.
Thank you. That piece was written in New Mexico, and it's from a series of songs called Songs from the Hill. Um, but I originally performed in a piece called Juice at the end of the 1960s. And um, it's, a, as you can hear, a little melody, but each time I'm doing something different or a different quality with the voice. Um, the songs from New Mexico, Songs from the Hill, I wrote in the mid-70s, and my sister was living out in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico, and I was doing a lot of work with voice and keyboard, and I wanted to go back to the a cappella voice, so I found a spot on a hill, and I would go out to this place every day, and my only goal was to just come up with the beginning of a song or an idea. I would sit out in the hot sun for hours sometimes, and sometimes it would be less time, um, and just really sat, listened until an idea for a song came up, and then when I came back to the East Coast, I developed them into musical forms, and it turned into a song cycle of 12 songs, all really having the sense of that magic of the beautiful landscape of New Mexico, the sky, and the mystery of that landscape. So this next one does come from that, that cycle, and it's called Walayo O. Will I oh 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 a lelo 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 a lelo 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 a lelo 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 a lelo, 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 mmm. Lelo, lelo, lelo,
Thank you. Um, for people that have never heard me sing or heard my music, um, I usually don't use text. There's a little bit of words that come in from time to time, but usually I'll do something with those words. Um, but I, it comes from having a revelation in the mid-60s about the voice. I came from a musical family and came from uh, Sarah Lawrence where I went to, uh, took classical leader and opera workshop. And one time I was vocalizing at the piano and I suddenly had a revel re revelation that the voice could be like an instrument and that it had a language in itself that it did not have to have words. So from that point on, I really started exploring what the voice can do and the different um, very deep kinds of ways that it gets to very fundamental kinds of feeling. So um, the next um, song that I want to sing is from a series called Light Songs, and I think of those as uh, duets for solo voice. There's always more than one thing happening at a time, and this is called Click Song Number One. Thank you very much. And the last uh, a cappella song is actually a little instrument. It's called Jews Harp, Jaw Harp. Um, in French, it's uh, Une Gambarde, uh, Scaccia Pensiere. In Italian, it's a little instrument that's really international in some ways. And I learned how to play it very soon after I started working with a voice. My sister taught, it, taught me. It has a lot of things in common with singing the changes of the resonance in the voice. So it's a wonderful little instrument and I don't have to carry a very heavy axe. It's good. <laughs> Oh, yo, 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 yo,
Thank you. So now I'd like to play and sing a few older songs. Um, maybe some of you know the song. It's called Gotham Lullaby. And um, it was on the first album that I made for ECM Records in the early 80s, but I wrote the song in the mid 70s. Um, and I've always loved to sing a lullaby because that's the, I think it's the first human song, a very functional, and uh, I always, try to write a lot of different lullabies. So this is one of my first ones. <clears throat>
Thank you. Here's another one from that period. Um, this piece is called Traveling, and it's part of uh, my opera called Education of the Girl Child uh, that I wrote in the early 70s, and it's a little dance and a little journey in 5-4. Now I'd like to, this is a real change, I'd like to present to you a little change of mood. Uh, this is a piece that comes from a film that I made uh, called Book of Days uh, in the late 80s. And it was basically a meditation on time and the way that there are cycles of, of uh, human occurrences 
Um, so it parallels the Middle Ages and the time of the late 80s, which was the AIDS crisis, and also the Middle Ages, the plague. <clears throat> and um, the main character is a young child who actually sees ahead to our time. She has visions of our time. And uh, she's in the Jewish community in the Middle Ages, and there's a, their two communities are quite separate. Living in neither one of those communities is an old mad woman or a wise woman who lives in a cave. And this little girl who sees these visions tells her grandparents, and they think it's like a Bible kind of image or something like that. So she's quite lonely in her visions. Um, so she goes to the cave and visits the, the mad woman and tells these kind of apocalyptic visions that she has to the mad woman. The mad woman answers with this song, which is basically, basically a song about uh, equanimity and how nature continues no matter what. So this is called Mad Woman's Vision. Hey, do didn't do and didn't do and didn't do. Hey, do didn't do and didn't didn't do and didn't do. Hey, do didn't do and didn't didn't do and didn't do. Hey, do didn't do and didn't didn't do and didn't do. Hey, do didn't do and did
And I'd like to sing a song for you, for you from an opera called Atlas, which I wrote for the Houston Grand Opera in the early 90s. Um, and that opera basically was about uh, um, exploration as metaphor of spiritual quest. The main character was called Alexandra, and she wanted to see the world. Um, and when she, she um, grows up, she starts to go on her first expedition, and she chooses companions that go, to go with her. And in the opera, there are four people that do this kind of audition. One of them cannot sing in tune, so he doesn't get to go for a while. But then he later on gets, because he's such a good-natured and wonderful man, come, gets to go on the trip. But um, basically, this is she's very excited about going on her journey, and this is the way she chooses her companions. have desire. Hey yo, hey yo. I have a dry sense of humor. Hey, hey 
yo. I'm a good cook. Hey yo, 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 hey yo,
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
That was prayer one from the Politics of Quiet. And this is Allison Sniffen. Now we're going to um, sing Scared Song for you. And um, that song was a kind of meditation on how fear seems to underlie so much of our, uh, what I say, violent behavior. Um, and actually, if you can just look at fear and instead of pushing it away, just try to work your way through it, it seems to dissolve into something else. So this is called Scared Song. Ha <laughs> ha 
skid, run a skid, no run a skid, 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 run a skid, run a skid, no run a skid, no run a skid, 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 run a skid, no run a skid, run a skid, run a skid, run a skid, Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> now I'd like to introduce Bodan Hillash. <laughs> and we're going to do two songs from a piece called Mercy, which was um, a collaboration that I did with a wonderful visual artist, Anne Hamilton. And again, we were just doing a kind of contemplation about what mercy really means and help and harm. Um, so this is called, uh, first is called Epilogue and then Katie will sing Woman at the Door. And let me just tell you a little story about that, Katie, what Katie will sing. Um, that was inspired by a true story of a woman in southern France, actually a, a village, who was very, um, brave, they were a Protestant village in, in a Catholic area in France, so they had suffered a lot. And um, her husband and she saved many hundreds of Jewish children during World War II. And the whole village participated in this and somehow the, the Nazi um, commander that was in that area let it go by because he respected these people very much. And um, when people said that she was a heroine, she said, no, 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 this is, this is just a normal human behavior. This is something that's just natural to us, to be decent. So that's the, the woman at the door, is, Katie will sing that. And she, she would always say, everyone is welcome to our house, come in, come in.
Come in. Come in. Now we're going to do two songs from a piece called The Games, uh, which I wrote with, uh, in collaboration with Ping Chong. We directed it together and I wrote the music. And we performed it originally in Berlin and we made it in 1984. So it was 1984, the missiles were coming into Berlin, and pointed towards Berlin. It was the Olympic Games and it was 1984. So. Uh, so we did a piece about the end of the world. Um, and basically, the world has come to an end as we know it, but there are survivors. And there's a kind of ambiguous, scenic element, which you, you wonder whether they're on another on a spaceship or whether they're on another planet making a new uh, community of survivors. They speak different languages. And they do a series of four games to remember Earth's culture. 
and only the oldest members of this society remember Earth's culture. So um, we would like to sing for you first the Panda chant, which is the kind of chant that happens that they, that they, they also do as part of the games. And then we'd like to sing memory song. Panda, 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 da, panda, panda, da, da, panda, 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 pan
to end with two pieces. One is called um, Masks from, again, from Mercy, and we'll end with Between Song from Impermanence.
rug and the floor between the hairs on her Between the window and the street, between the air and the man walking, walking, between the heels and the sound. Na 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 na
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we do it? Okay. Mm. We'll just do one last short, ho hopefully amusing one, especially for this young person that's right in the front row. <laughs> Two young people. Two young people. Okay. This is called The Tale from Education of the Girl Child. And in the opera, uh, there are four old women and they're doing like a little dance together and with their little different babushka styles. And death comes in three times and takes one away, but then the other ones get up, oh, shh, we're still here. And then finally the last one is left and she does a kind of inventory of her possessions, hopefully that she will not get taken away. So here is the tale. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.